Hey everyone, hopefully everyone can hear me. So today we are having a re-behind the scenes and we're having back on Anastasia and TJ. They're going to be showing us another house that they are just recently sold. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, probably closing in the next in the next couple weeks. So it'll be fun to see their project. Okay, I can see TJ's on. Give me a minute. Hey guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming on again. It's exciting to see another project you guys are doing. This is another flip, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, finally done. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> a long day with this project or another one? No, no, no. This one's been uh, completed for a while. The, the other two projects on the go is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Giving you headaches. <laughs> yeah. So just to give everyone a quick reminder of what behind the scenes on, basically they're going to be showing us their project. So the flip that this one's a flip. So they're going to go through the property, show us their flip. They're going to show us their numbers. They're going to talk about the problems that they came up uh, that came up in the project and the solution. So I think it'll be fun for everyone to see. So um, do you want to get started with uh, just showing us, or actually, let's, even though people have seen your previous one, for the new people that haven't, do you guys want to just tell a little bit about yourselves? Uh, sure, yeah. We, uh, we started by Homes Ontario uh, back in August or September. Um, we have a flipping company in Simcoe County. We currently have two flips on the go, and we just sold three of them. Uh, we have another one closing at month as well. Um, and yeah, so we have, uh, we have a crew in the area that, that does our renovations and we also JV with another crew, um, that is based in Aurelia and yeah. That's, uh, so even though you guys started last year though, uh, you come with still some experience from the past, Yeah. right? This is just you guys going together last year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I used to just be a hobby flipper, um, back in the day. And then when we joined council and stuff, we started going, going, uh, a lot quicker and we started the company together. Um, yeah, Anna has a couple properties in her portfolio. Um, I ended up selling all of mine other than my primary residence with this crazy market. So, um, awesome. Taking advantage, right? Of <laughs> all the money that's coming out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So show us what you guys have done with this project. So this is uh, one of our flips. It looks almost identical to the thing to the other flip that we were on your last uh, live with same flooring vinyl flooring um we did the same door same trim um this is a very small property so we originally bought this property uh to turn it into a duplex uh but in december we got a call from our realtor and was like hey you know market's crazy I think you guys should just finish the top unit and slap it on the market while it's hot. And uh, we ended up doing just that. Uh, we, we actually sold it with the drawings from the, uh, from the design. For the permits? Yeah, uh, yeah, for the permits that need to be submitted with the permit. And um, yeah, she was completely right. Uh, our projected, um, we bought this last September, actually, and this was, the first one. this was the very first property we got under contract together. And it was uh, it had a tenant in it, um, uh, and it was it was with lots of problems. <laughs> um, he obviously wasn't paying rent, dealing drugs, doing drugs, everything you can imagine. Um, 
he was doing. And uh, he, it actually surprisingly turned out very, very well. We offered him cash for keys. And um, yeah, yeah, waterfront view. And um, yeah, so he took the cash for keys, uh, moved out after about three months. And we actually sat for a little bit um, after we demoed it because we thought we were going to duplex it. So we were, we were waiting for the designs. So we actually didn't start commit, like going crazy until uh, um, until uh, in, until December when we got that call. And from that point, oh. it took us uh, a when we originally bought it so uh we did very well on this one hello can you hear me uh yeah a lot. sorry i can't tell if it whose network connection is so if you can see me i'm like in the middle of moving because <laughs> i don't know if it was mine or you guys so i was like i'm just gonna move <laughs> yeah you froze on us okay let me just set up one second guys let me just set up in a better area Oh, okay. Um, okay, so everyone else, I guess I hope they heard you guys, or should we recap a little? Uh, I don't know. Somebody in the comments tell us <laughs> if you heard us or not. Yeah. We were, we were clear you glitched out for a little bit, um, but maybe double check. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to kind of get myself set up over here. Um, maybe we'll do a mini recap. So yeah, uh, the recap was originally it's supposed to be a duplex. We ended up just finishing the top unit and putting it up for sale. We got about 10K under what we were originally hoping to get as a duplex back in September. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Oh, that's amazing. That's really good. Yeah. And so the basement then is completely unfinished? Yeah, it's unfinished. I take you through, but it's just, it's just an unfinished basement. It's just an unfinished basement, Yeah. yeah. But that's awesome, though, that you were able to get it for, you know, so you also, did you also sp spend less than your budget? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So we were projecting, like, 80K for the reno. Um, I think we came under 60, under 60 um, but we also did higher finishes than we normally were going to. Like, we had ports in the, in the kitchen and the um, bathroom. Um, and we spent a little bit more money on the outside for the curb appeal. Um, mm -hmm. So there, we're going to be uploading some pictures, like some before and after pictures. Um, anybody who's seen like the couple masterminds I was on, I've showed a couple. The the before and afters of the uh, um, the kitchen were pretty insane, and, and the the front, the amount of garbage that was in this place, and uh, and the the pets, the pets that were in here. Um, oh yeah lots of animals <laughs> lots, lots of uh, unwanted guests <laughs> did you have to start charging them rent hey guys you need to beauty i'm gonna charge you rent if you don't leave <laughs> that's funny and so was this unit uh a three bedroom or is it a two bedroom just, just the two bedroom one bath a... and we did main floor laundry up here um just so that 
it was uh they didn't have to go through the garage and downstairs just to do the washer uh, their laundry so and what was the plan with the basement would have that been also a two bedroom if you did finish yeah, yeah that's the design oh, okay okay awesome uh so let's let's run through the numbers yeah so we originally bought this for 185 back in september um we obviously got a wicked deal because the tenant was in rent for i don't know how long um this was through a referral is uh is how we acquired it uh we ended up refining it to 200 um during the uh just after we got the tenant out and we used that money to finance both this reno and the other reno that you guys saw in the previous um, video. Uh, from there, we again finished, uh, we put 60K into it um, for, that's between the reno or the material, the labor, and also our overhead at the time because we had a, a project manager and an admin on salary um, during the, this renovation. Um, with closing costs and, and whatnot, uh, our estimated profit, like it hasn't closed yet. Uh, we need to get the final numbers from, from the mortgages that we have on it. Um, but it's, uh, we were about 250, sorry, how much are we going to Over 100. Pardon? Over 100K. Yeah, we got over, about over 100K on, of profit on this one. Um, oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. And how much was it? And how much were holding costs? Did you say that? Sorry, I forgot. What was the holding costs? Holding costs were. Where, where was the holding costs? Sorry, we had a. We have them all summarized. It's all lumped into into one payment here. Or into, oh, okay. It's probably is it part of your renovations then? Yeah, yeah, that's so, fine. If it's part of the renovations, it's fine. Oh, sorry. So that's amazing. Yeah, the overhead was six thousand and sixty one. Um, that's just uh, mortgage payments during the the, the span. No, the around. holding costs. Or the holding costs, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mortgage payments. So. And so, um, so yeah, you guys did it, made awesome profits and didn't have to spend as much on your renovations, which is awesome. I'm sure you guys are like really happy about that. Yeah. So yeah. how come this one? Um, so how long did you have the tenant in there for before, you know, like they actually, like you gave them cash for keys and started the renovation process? Yeah. So uh, that was the part where you uh, glitched out a little bit, but um, okay. we, yeah, so we, uh, we offered cash for keys. He, he didn't pay rent for September, October, November. We paid him first and last ish to get him out in November. He moved out uh, effortlessly, which was surprising. Um, and then from November to December, we were waiting for the designs and, and all of that, where everything was on standstill. Like we demoed cleaning it all up. For, cleaning and up. the cleanup, like it was, uh, uh, sorry, it was cleaned up and, and what we needed to, to demo was demoed. Um, then during that time frame is when we decided to just finish the top unit. We weren't commencing with the upstairs until we knew exactly what was happening because it costs twice as much having like it's it's sorry you get much better deal if you have all the drywallers doing both units at each time and the rough carpenters are doing both units at each time and um so we did lose a little bit of time almost uh almost two complete months or about a month and a half of of time just playing game like w the waiting game but uh and yeah. for the tenant did you like, did you expect to wait that long or, or what took so long for it to get them out? Was that, is it for a specific oh, that's reason? Not, that's not long. We, we thought we'd be stuck with them forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we expected much longer time. Okay? Yeah, much longer time. We were, we were, uh, we were averaging like six months at least to get them out. Like he, him leaving that quick was phenomenal. Um, and for that cheap too, uh, we just went through another, on our other property we bought with a tenant, uh, it was uh, first and last for him to leave here. And then this other one was over, I think we're like eight grand between the paralegal cash for keys and what he needed to leave. So, uh, you, you, and then I know a couple other people that are paying a lot more to get tenants out, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but what I meant, so I didn't mean that it was like long, I meant in the sense of like, so did you immediately offer cash for keys like once you closed or are you 
I thought I thought you waited three months. That's why I was wondering if you, why you were waiting. So you, it took me three weeks just to meet the guy. He kept uh, he, like every time he's like, "Yeah, come at this time." He wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, the, the times that I was supposed to do a walkthrough. There was I thought very funny stories. I thought there was a really really big dog because this dog sounded angry. I couldn't see. Through <laughs> Normally, you could just walk through if I gave him notice and stuff, right? Um, but because like I brought the locksmith and we went to go through and I heard the dog and I was like, okay, we can't go through because this dog's going to rip us apart. When I finally met the tenant and when we talked and whatever, and he turned out to be like a really nice guy, just in a path. Um, the, the dog was actually a very small beagle. And <laughs> <laughs> it sounded a lot, a lot scarier than, uh, than that it looked. <laughs> So. so it's funny because I guess he's trying to dodge you guys thinking probably I guess the worst and then so what what how did you make him feel comfortable with you like how did you or or was it like you just like tried to get in at you know like at, at a random time and just try to catch him so he just don't uh, it just didn't play aggressive um like, like, we didn't act, act aggressive at all, right? It was just like, I'm here to help you. Like, what do I need to do to help you get to where you need to be? Because we both know that you can't stay here. Like, you're living in a, it's a, it's a, it was a mess. So, um, yeah, that's how I approached it. I was just super calm with them, um, almost like a buddy. <laughs> my, uh, my phone's almost dying here. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I have a charger. Charger? Okay. okay. And it's going to go grab a charger. We'll hook it up to the laptop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully we can keep it going by the time she comes back. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. oh, so that's good. So, so it was only really three weeks that, that it took and then to just even get to see them, which, yeah, you're right. That's not bad. And in the three weeks is when you actually um, asked for the cash for keys or did it take a little bit of time, like a, you know, some kind of conversation. Yeah, I had to wait when he wasn't high. <laughs> <laughs> before, I need you to be fully sober to understand what I'm telling yeah. you at this moment. <laughs> right. I don't think I ever, I ever, I ever found the time where he wasn't, but it was, it was, uh, I found it when he was at the least high he was. So it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> it didn't take long. It's just, it was longer trying to meet him and, and, have, and, and talk to him than anything because he, he, there was about five times where I was supposed to meet him and he didn't meet me. So uh, I think it was, it was getting crazy. That's when I called the locksmith because I was done. Um, mm -hmm. So there we go. We're good. We got the battery turned around now. <laughs> awesome. And so Vlad is just asking a question. So where did you find the, the deal? Uh, it was on MLS actually, right? Because you said no, no, realtor. No. Oh, no. A referral. Yeah, this is oh, referral. sorry, you said referral. Sorry, yes. But your realtor told you to put it on the market um, is what you were saying, I guess, about the realtor. Absolutely, yep. So mm -hmm. it's just through referral, talking to people, and, that, and then they called me, and they're like, a family member needs to get rid of this property, not getting any rent. Are you able to close super quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then by talking about what you're doing, like, you're able to help out. You're the guy that call when it happens, right? So. 100% yeah so that's awesome okay so so and then you gave him I guess a couple of months to find a place that and then that's how it came up to three months for for you guys to right you said it was three months kind of it was uh it was wishy-washy the first month he got kind of October because he was on the fence and then between the middle of October he realized he could get a paycheck and then everything went super quick after he realized there was money uh and uh -huh. so um oh, okay so 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 he left then after once he found out about the money was what a month then he just gave a month to leave or something it was like he was gone in like three weeks it was amazing um, oh yeah, yeah <laughs> i was trying to have the conversation with them a lot in september then it kind of proceeded to the first week of october it finally clued in that he could get paid at the end of the month he called me and he's like i think i have a place to go can I get that money on the, on the first? I'm like, as, yeah, as soon as like, if you need help. And, uh, 
and then it, yeah, it, it, in three weeks he was gone and he got paid and, and it was effortless. That's awesome. And so now, now getting okay, and then so getting into the renovations. So then that's when you finally you had a couple months off because you were getting the the drawings and stuff done. Any uh, other than. Or, I mean, I don't know if that was a problem, but during the renovation process, what kind of problems did you come up with? Uh, winter was a little bit of an issue um, just for the outside. Uh, we, like, the curb appeal was... was um, under Yeah, it was under... Like, a lot of the areas where we had to do um, a walkway and stuff. Like, you can see from the picture that uh, you tagged us in on Facebook or Instagram, the, the walkway that we made in front where the garden is. Uh, there was a lot like that was all buried in snow so we actually had to wait till it was almost listed to be able to do that because we needed all that snow melted uh, we we built a floating deck for out front for curb appeal uh, which even even though we like tiger torched it all down and, and got and melted all the snow because it was so muddy by the time it all melted it it, it was shifted and had to go back and repair um we the problems were with the ladies appliances so appliances were, were canceled like crazy like canceled and reissued and canceled ordered uh the kitchen for got... the exterior part where was what you did planned or was that extra because you had pivoted and now wanted it to just you know do a fa like a, just the upstairs or just give it that extra curve appeal like was that already expected to do that yeah so the deck and the garage door and fixing the siding uh, was to plan. Uh, east trough ended up breaking during the windstorm and the, uh, the cement pathway we did, we, we knew we had to fix part of the cement because it was all chipped out, but we created this cement pathway. It was actually the idea from the, from the cement guy we called, called a bunch of landscapers. They didn't know how to do it. They're like, oh, oh it's just gonna die, it's too cold. Um, I'm like, well, how do we make this pretty? So uh, landscapers weren't a help, but the cement guy was amazing. He was like, yeah, we'll build this nice little pathway from here to here. We'll connect it to the deck. It'll look gorgeous. I'm like, perfect. Just make it happen. And then when he mm -hmm. did it, when he did it, he's like, I left a little space in between the house and the this, so you can put some mulch and you can do a garden, you can do this. So I got to give credit to uh, to Adam Deschamps. Uh, um but uh he he was the one who designed the little curb appeal there it was amazing uh yeah so that's awesome when you can find someone good like that that will you know give you that extra information you know to help you you know make your place better because yeah sometimes people are just only focused on what they do and and don't really look at the big picture and sometimes especially for flips the big picture can be so important right Absolutely. Yeah. And the curb appeal, well, it, it was night and day between the what we did, like the way we were going to leave it and, and the way it ended up being. Uh, look, we weren't going to leave it that way, but the, the way it originally was in the way that we did it. Mm -hmm. You know what you should do? I don't know. This just popped into my head. If you do post the pictures, post it in the comments of this one. So when people look at it, they can also see your after every before pictures okay. in, in this uh, show. I think that'd be nice because then people can see the actual big difference between, you know, like that in the video, we're seeing the after and then you can see the before. Absolutely. And if it, like they can jump on my Instagram and go scroll back to the old posts and you'll be able to find. Like, yeah. Or link. <laughs> yeah. Or even link that post into the comments or something. I don't know how that works, but you know, <laughs> something. <laughs> So then, okay, and then you guys started, we're talking about the inside. So, oh, you had problems with the appliances. So how come they're canceled? Like the orders just weren't coming in, I guess. Yeah, it's just Home Depot con uh, back ordered and... Um, Some sort of issue. Yeah, back end issue. <laughs> Any, anything else? What, what, how, what else? Anything else happened inside? Um, what else happened inside? Okay. Kitchen guy. Yeah. So, uh, it delayed us about three weeks. Um, probably cost us like a good 40, 50 grand because we kind of missed the insane part of the market, uh, because by just a bit, just a bit um, the kitchen guy, uh, went through different door cabinet, uh, door companies. So when he ordered them, they made them all the wrong size. And so when he brought them up and went to, um, and they were delayed. They were delayed like two weeks. 
and then they came in finally and they were the wrong size and then you had to get them remade which was another two weeks after wow we lost yeah. a month just based on the kitchen guy um yeah that's crazy yeah that that those kind of things are hard too uh so so you didn't you didn't get but then so that wasn't from home depot that then the kitchen cabinets weren't from home depot that was from uh, a supplier uh, yeah supplier <laughs> But, uh, any any other thing that um that you that happened in this property um just the uh the the leftover tenants were really funny the, the amount of garbage <laughs> broken holes um yeah it was left in a really 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 disrepair uh we had a lot of electrical to clean up and and whatnot just because it was a rat's nest um Downstairs. Yeah. Oh, uh, because of the uh, yeah, unexpected downstairs. unexpected tenants, there was uh, <laughs> a lot of the insulation that was in the garage. We had to get rid of, and the insulation in the basement we had to replace um, because it was just saturated with tenants. <laughs> <laughs> with tenants. <laughs> that much, eh? Oh my God, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah. well, That's when, crazy. When you left the place the kitchen was like five or six garbage bags. Like all the cabinet doors were ripped off. The garbage bags were everywhere. There was food and mold and everything that you could think of. Um, when we took, yeah, when we took over, he, uh, uh, he, he, he's, he said to me two weeks after, when I finally got a hold of him, he's like, oh, by the way, the fridge doesn't work. And I'm like, how long is the fridge? been not working he's like i don't know like two months and i was like <laughs> you've been living without a fridge with for two months like he's like yeah i was i didn't think it was a big deal like how do you <laughs> maybe he eats out all the time i guess <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so this one at least wasn't i get this wasn't as bad as your other one that we spoke about this one was then still better right yeah, it was better other than the, the just trying, like the canceling, dealing with the kitchen was, was brutal. Dealing with the waiting, like it was so much waiting game on this property. It was very infuriating, like between the kitchen, the, uh, the contractors, the, uh, the designer, um, er everything involved there was, uh, took, took a long time. Um, like with the permits for the design took long. Yeah. You said it took two months to get that done. Uh, it was like uh, for the basement. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it took it took a while, but we had to do some things too. We had to get a structural engineer in just to make sure that everything was good, and we had to do. It, it wasn't just the designer's fault. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. but how come? So how? I guess. Well, I guess it must have been hard to bring them in while the tenant was there. Like yeah. you didn't want to just try getting yeah. it in, but like during while you're still trying to get the tenants out? It was vacant. It was vacant at that time. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. How come you didn't try to get, let's say the designer in sooner, like while it wasn't vacant? Was it just like it was, too hard? Yeah. It was yeah, it was tenanted still. And it was too, work, working with him was crazy. Like it took me five times just to meet him. Um, it took, mm -hmm. me, what, it took me four times just to pay him at the end. He was just all over the place, so. Um, every time I showed up, he was doing a run or he wasn't there. Or they had all the curtains closed. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and so you were thinking, so, so technically this project closed sooner than you expected, related even in the sense of the tenant, because you thought that the tenant was going to, it was going to take like six months to just even get the tenant out, right? So you had planned like this to be a long-term, like probably I guess a, a one year flip was, is that, was that your initial plan? Yeah. 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 Pretty much like uh, maybe not a full year. Um, but uh, like it was a, it's a two month flip if everything went according to plan, like maybe seven, uh, seven weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the closing, like how long is your, is your closing um, like from when you've sold to, to when, when you close a month? Yeah. Also, oh, people are closing really quick right now. Yeah. So with the last three properties we sold, 
every single one reached out to our realtor and said, how can we make this the most attractive offer? And I said, quick closing. Mm -hmm. so. Sorry, one sec. Sorry, if you said again. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, with the last three properties we sold, oh, uh, Sorry, one they second. asked. Okay. 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 I can hear you now. Um, Sorry about what you were saying? Yeah. So when the, the last three houses that we sold, the, the people who were submitting offers reached out to our realtor and asked, how can we make this the most attractive offer? And uh, we said quick closing. Because like, you can't, obviously highest price, but <laughs> you can't say that, right? So that just, when do you want the preferred closing date and whatnot? So it was all, I think every single one of them was 30 days. So. Oh, wow. So that's good to know. So I guess right now, a lot of people are doing quick closings. Well, I guess also, do you know who was the close? Like, do you know if the people were investors or people that just wanted to live? Do you have, a, could you tell? Um, yeah, so I don't think the so. The last one we did with you, that was people who were going to live there. Uh, the other one we sold, it was the investors because it's not moving ready or anything like that. Yeah, so, so the first one was uh, like a single single mom so we found that out so we actually started going the extra mile on that to make sure like she didn't have to do anything that wasn't expected that she wasn't prepared for like construction wise or anything that arose so we uh we did like little things like uh the heat tracers that are in the gutters we had hard uh hard wired so that she can just flick on a switch in the basement so she doesn't have to like go inside and plug them in and do whatever mm -hmm. um, oh that's nice we got a backup uh uh, oh, some, oh, sun pump, a backup sun pump, so that if the power went out, it just kicks in right away, so she doesn't have to worry about getting to Jenny and 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 hooking up the sun pump right away because it was a high water table over there. Um, and then, uh, so for the concession thirteen property, we sold it sold to an investor, so it, it needed a lot of work, but he's they're doing all the work. Um, and this property, uh, it was all I know is it was between a Toronto. Uh, and a local so that's awesome so but this yeah i guess like other than i guess delays but technically for you guys it wasn't really delay because you expected this to be a longer flip it wasn't then really that bad i mean i know i know like waiting is really annoying because you're just like sitting there and anxious but it technically wasn't it wasn't that bad this was, uh, and you, cause you, was this, this one was a full gut again too, right? Like you probably did most of the electrical, like, did you have, or like, did you have to open up walls and stuff? No, no. Uh, we, we made the bathroom a little bit bigger, but that's about it. We had to fit a full size tub. Um, and, uh, washer but no, yeah. Uh, we built the little closet where the wa washer and dryer's in. Uh, no, this was effortless. Like this, this would have been much, much quicker if we didn't deal with all the hiccups along the way. Right. It took yeah. as long as it did just because of of timing and um, not finding like, quicker solutions. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome though. It went so well. I mean, like with the profits and everything that you're getting, everything went really well. I mean, in the end, it went really well. Even though you have these little hiccups, everything turned out amazing for you guys. So do yeah. you guys have any, any, uh, or is there any other, I think those are all the problems that you guys encountered on this project, right? That's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much it. Yeah. So any, any tips for the viewers that, um, anyone that wants to do a flip, you have any tips for the viewers? Uh, yeah, like understanding what your intentions are and what you do and what you don't do for the business. Like we were, we originally bought this as a duplex and then we realized for time wise like we don't want to do that in our in our business so we have we just haven't done a duplex since um you there is higher returns on on duplexes but you also a lot more time um and keep in mind like just because we lucked out with the cash for keys at a set at a certain price doesn't always work like that. So don't just be buying properties with tenants in it, hoping that you're going to kick them out. It's not that you're kicking them out. It's a win-win, right? They, they have somewhere to go. They, they need the money. Um, you're able to help them. You, you're not just buying properties to kick tenants out. Um, and 
Yeah, having a plan. And then so Terry's asking, would you use the same engineer, designer, and architect again? Uh, so the designer we use actually uh, fit us in as a favor. Um, I, I knew it was going to take a little bit because they had to squeeze us in. They ended up connecting us with another designer, which, like, there was nothing wrong with them. It's just they were so booked with everything going on. And, uh, like, depending on their schedule, yeah, I would use them again. It's just communicating and knowing their schedule. Um, yeah, I think that's a very big part is, uh, oh, and I don't know, I feel like at least the way we work usually when we do our flips is um, we don't, for example, tell them that our that our house is a flip, or our subs, we don't, or, or yeah, our suppliers and stuff, we'll just say like we have a house and we even just ask them, you know, what is, what is the time frame, for example, for getting cabinets or something, so that at least you get something realistic, because I feel like when you're rushing them i mean in your case this didn't happen this is more of a, a tip but because i feel like sometimes if you're rushing someone and be like we need this like as soon as possible because we have a flip blah blah and then they'll be like yeah yeah we can get it done in like three weeks and then it's like six weeks later because really they couldn't get it done and again like the super book like especially with covid i feel like a lot of suppliers are super booked so i feel like that's also a random tip that i would give is maybe not at the very beginning tell them it's a flip unless if you know them very well if you know them very well you kind of know how their times are and you've already built that relationship but i feel like if it's new i feel like you shouldn't off the bat say it's a flip <laughs> and just yeah. let and then let them guide you on what their time frames are well what, what we do you guys think we got a property closing at the end of the month and we used one of our walkthroughs to get the engineering right away because we knew it was going to take time so um, they're, also, already working on it. they're already working on it. It'll be it'll be done before we even close. So mm -hmm. um, that's another tip: is just use those walkthroughs wisely and uh, get your contractors in and, and start doing everything at a time. Yeah, hundred percent. That one I also agree with too. That's something that we like to do too: is definitely taking advantage of those uh, viewings that you get to try to get everything as much as you can done before you actually even close. For sure, it's an awesome tip. <laughs> thanks so much guys for for coming on it was it was awesome to see your new flip and and um i hope we see a lot more of them <laughs> yeah thanks for having us again awesome thank you guys bye everyone thank you everyone for watching bye